This video is sponsored by Renderpool. Get your renders done 20 times faster with Renderpool. Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and this video is going to be a little bit different from our usual content. In the video I'll be taking you through the process of animating some cameras in a scene I've set up in Blender beforehand and rendering that camera animation using the render farm render pool. In the end we'll get something like this. If you've never used a render farm before or even heard of one, it's basically an online service that allows you to upload your Blender scenes and let the service take care of the rendering for you instead of rendering the footage locally on your computer. If you're like me and don't have the fastest GPU or CPU, Render Farm might be a really good alternative. I've honestly never used a Render Farm before, so I thought this would be a fun way to try it out and basically just document my experience as a first time user. Anyway, I'll talk more about the service later on. First, let's have a look at our scene. So this is a scene I've honestly had sitting in a personal projects folder for the longest time. I started concepting the scene when I had a very low end PC and was just getting started into my 3D journey. And despite having a specific vision for the project, I wasn't experienced enough to see it through really. So being able to come back to this project all of these years later is kind of like a special moment for me. The idea behind the scene is nothing special. I was just basically imagining this junkyard in a stylized post-apocalyptic setting and had the idea of this pig guy stealing this girl's prosthetic arm. And along with her younger brother, they're basically trying to get it back. In the scene, I obviously wanted loads of garbage piles, knickknacks, wrecked cars, garbage, and also these acid pits that light the scenes in an ominous kind of glow. Most of what you see in the scene, minus the characters of course, are Sketchfab assets, which I used via the free Blender add-on, and Quixel Mega Scans, which I got through the Bridge application. As for the characters, I actually used Substance 3D Modeler to sculpt the characters in VR. I am thinking about releasing a bonus video of how I sculpted Pigman using my Oculus Quest 2, so if you're interested let me know in the comments below. With that said, that basically covers how this scene came to be. If you're interested in the techniques I used to create this environment, I highly recommend watching these videos, one of which I literally created a stylized sci-fi planet environment in Blender or the ongoing Bloodcrest Mountain series, which is a quite in-depth look at how I construct scenes in Blender. One thing that I wanted to mention is that to get scenes to work with Renderpool, we will be rendering through the Cycles render engine, but that alone can be quite heavy on the system, especially if you have a lot of geometry and lights in your scene like I do. So what I did was to focus on constructing the scene in clay shader mode in combination with EV first. I chose an initial still shot to kind of base my composition on and use one of the composition guides which can be found under the camera icon, just make sure that the camera is selected, and under viewport display and composition guides we get a few options. For my shot I chose triangle B, although our pigman and two characters don't align perfectly with the composition guides, that doesn't really matter. It's just a rough guide, especially since our camera will be moving through the environment. So you don't have to be super strict about it. Once everything in the shot was in place, I could finally start having a look at the scene in cycles. Now, this might not always be the case with your scene, but my EV scene looked drastically different compared to cycles. And what I mean by that is that the cycle scene was extremely washed out. So I really had to crank up the intensity and saturation on both the fog, the background, lights and so on. And that kind of makes our EV scene look extremely oversaturated. So that's what you're seeing right now. But that doesn't really matter because it's what the cycle scene looks like. That's kind of our end goal. So I'm pretty much just treating EV as a rough guide. So if you're like me and you don't have stupid amount of money to spend on RTX 3090s or 4090s, we'll have to be careful when it comes to cycles. 
You don't want to experience Blender crashing every time you switch from EV to Cycles. So to do that, I limit the amount of samples under the render properties and chose my GPU as it's more powerful than my CPU. For reference, I have an RTX 3080 Ti, so it's a great processor but still struggles a bit whenever Blender has a lot of geometry in it. Under sampling, I chose to do just a few hundred samples and chose the denoise option, which is basically an algorithm that smooths out the render in order to get rid of all of that noise. This will probably result in a kind of a melted look in your renders, but for now we're just trying to figure out the lighting and color setup in the scene, so that's completely fine. Another shortcut I'd recommend you learn is Control B, which allows you to render only a small window of choosing, and that might be a little bit easier on your computer. To get rid of it and render the full window again, you can just press Alt Control B. With that said, there are a lot of ways to optimize Blender scenes and I highly recommend you check out this video from Blender Gear for that. I am honestly not experienced enough to really know what I'm talking about when it comes to like samples and cycles and all of that. But hey, I mean, I'm still learning. Okay, let's start animating some cameras. So since our characters are static, I sort of wanted to treat the camera animations like a mix of showcasing the scene and a storyboard of sorts, where we'll cut to several cameras focusing on different aspects of the shot. Let's start with our first establishing shot, which is the main compositional camera that I already have present. For the resolution, I've chosen 1920 by 1080 since that will be a bit more YouTube friendly when it renders out. Then using the timeline editor and pressing I on our scene, we can add location keyframes as our first frame. I will then move forward in the timeline, reposition my camera and where I want it to end. You can choose to use the camera to view option to have the camera follow you wherever you look at the scene, by the way. And I basically just repeat that same process to create a new keyframe. Playing our animation, it looks something like this. If you don't want a slow start and a slow end, you can choose the keyframes you want to edit and with B change the keyframe handle type. So you can have either like a slow fade or just like a linear animation and so on. Okay, now that I'm happy with that, I'll save the scene as shot one. The reason is when you upload the Blender file to RenderPool, the camera you have selected is the one that gets rendered. So if we have three different shots with three different cameras, we will need three different Blender files. You can, if you want, just select a new camera and upload the Blender file three separate times. But personally, I just find it easier to just save them out as three separate files. Although that also means that if you make any changes to anything in the scene, it won't carry over to the other files. So I do the camera animations as a last step after everything in the scene is finished. Since our videos tend to be 30 frames per second, I would choose that for these camera animations too. There are a lot more camera animation settings that you can do, but I just wanted to keep this video really simple. So how do we prep the Blender files so that they're ready for upload to render pool? Well, it's actually really simple. Under File and External Data and Pack Resources, you can pack all of the textures and scene information into that single Blender file. So Blender will no longer have to reference things locally on your computer and has everything it needs inside of it. And honestly, that's it. If you want more information on this, RenderPool's website has loads of tips and instructions. One thing I did want to mention and is an error I ran into is if you're using 2D planes to project video files, like the smoke and the fireflies in the scene, Packing the video files doesn't really work and will result in these really weird glitchy planes. So instead what you need to do is have the video files in the same folder as the Blender scene and reroute the extension to reference those files. Then under Files, External Data and Find Missing Files, reference that same folder. As a last step, all you need to do is create a zip folder including just the Blender file and those videos and upload the zip folder instead. Speaking of, let's talk about the Blenderpool website. What you'll see when you've created your account is this little dashboard with information about the amount of points you have, your recent uploads, and so on. In the top right corner, you can upload your files. Depending on how much information you've packed into your Blender file, this can take a while. 
but after it's uploaded you get to mess around with some render settings. Now I wasn't sure how many samples I needed for my scenes so I did a local render test on my own computer to see how many samples I needed to get a clear image of my scene. But of course you can do that in Renderful too. You just choose frame 1 to 1. Just remember before uploading if you want to have denoising which will speed up your render but make it look less detailed, turn it either on or off in Blender before you upload your file. I ran a local test on my computer and got a clear image using about 1200-ish samples with denoising on and basically just input that into the render settings. For my first shot, I also had the camera animating from keyframe 1 to 300. You also get to choose from different render systems, whether that be GPU or CPU. For some of my earlier renders, the GPU option worked really well, but once my scene got a bit complicated, I kept getting errors from the GPU render. Now, I talked to the render pool team about this, and this is apparently a memory issue caused by Blender itself. So all I had to do was just switch to the CPU option instead, and that worked great. Hopefully you won't run into those same errors. You get to also choose whether you get a batch of images or a video file. Personally, I chose to get a batch of images as I can easily take that into DaVinci Resolve, which is the free video editing software, by the way, and it is amazing. And DaVinci will basically turn those images into a video for me. All we need to do is repeat that same process before two remaining shots. Before you hit render, you get to see a rough estimate of how many points you'll be using and how many you'll have left after the render is finished. If you have a limited amount of points, I would do a test for just a few seconds before rendering out the entire set of frames. That way you can spot any errors before you go all in. Although that won't be a problem if you've got the render pool unlimited plan. So their newly released unlimited plan is meant for professional artists or animation studios with great rendering needs or just people who don't want to worry about point limitations, time limitations or budgeting constraints. Starting at $140 a month, you can use unlimited rendering power in packets of 4, 8 or 12 nodes using high performance NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. There really is no setup, no plugins, just pure power. If you're interested, go to renderpool.net for more information on that. They also offer free trials with no strings attached and will give you about 30,000 points I believe. So you can test out the service before you purchase any more points. Maybe this could be a special Christmas gift for someone you love, hmm? Again, special thanks to Renderpool for sponsoring this video. Alright, now that we're all set, let's hit render and sit back. What I think is so good about this service is that you can upload several Blender files with several camera shots and have them render at the same time. Which, I mean, you can't really do if you're rendering the shots locally on your computer. Imagine you had like 10 or even 100 camera shots that would take ages without a render farm. So now that that's done, you can turn off your computer and do whatever you want as Renderpool will handle the rest. You can check in on the progress at any time and you'll get an email once the render is done and you can download the files. Again, as mentioned, all I needed to do in DaVinci is drag these batch images into the timeline and voila. Do that for the rest of the shots and we are done. Let's have a look at our final animation. And there you have it. All in all, I am very impressed with Renderpool. I approached the service as a first time user and found it very easy to use. As long as you have enough knowledge about cycles and samples, frame rendering, cameras and so on, using Renderpool should be an absolute breeze. Just remember to pack all of the resources into the project before you upload it. I forgot that quite a few times and it was very annoying. I also wanted to do this little test and see just how much time Renderpool saved me and wow, that is insane. Just look at that difference. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project and my little experiment. 
I'd love to work with Renderpool again in the future, so if you have any suggestions for what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in that case, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will eventually release the creation of Pigman soon enough. Thanks for watching guys, and thanks for sponsoring this video, Renderpool. Bye!